All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Twin Tiers EPC on this nice, sunny, cool Sunday morning. Really appreciate the, the changes in weather that, that we get here. Lord's blessed us with rain, with sunshine, with warmth, with coolness. I mean, we've, we've had it all this week. Um, we do have some announcements. Bible study at the Monroe's on Tuesday. We have men and women's Bible study here on Thursday. Uh, we're having communion this morning, so please remember to prepare your hearts for that. We are um, still collecting mayonnaise for the Big Flats Food Pantry, and we'll be doing that for a few more weeks. Um, and we are having a congregational meeting next week before the luncheon. There is a luncheon. Uh, and the congregational meeting will have three um, parts to it. Um, it'll be the election of a fifth elder uh, to session, uh, the announcement from session of the hiring of a part-time pastor, <laughs> and <coughs> a, an update from the um, search committee on how the search is going. Um, it, it is important to note that um, although we're hiring a part-time pastor, um, the search for a full-time uh, pastor is not stopping or slowing down. Um, the intent is to continue to find a full-time pastor. Uh, did I miss any announcements? Uh, oh, hot dog night. We have the community hot dog night uh, coming up. Uh, and what's the date on that? Okay, the 24th of August. So we need to make sure we're letting people know. Um, so this is intended to be a community event. Let the community know we're, we're here. Come have some food and, and fellowship. So uh, if there are no other announcements, let's quiet our hearts and minds and prepare our hearts for worship.
wonderful. Let's open our service of prayer. Heavenly Father, we've come together to give you praise and worship. Clear our hearts and minds this morning and bring us to a point of focus on you. And your word for each of us this morning. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Our call to worship this morning is Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is good. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give, him, <clears throat> give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Worship team.
frame, but holy trust in Jesus' name. All Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I'll rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the frowning flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. that time of day when we come to prayer and praise and uh, David I would like to say a word this morning before we start thank you y'all know that uh, Lyle passed away this past week Lyle and I had something special um we were both Vietnam veterans, and there were times when we could uh, sit and be quiet, maybe sip a little bourbon, and tell stories. And um, here's one from him. Uh, picture this. Uh, Lyle is flying on a combat mission over enemy-controlled territory in Vietnam. His helicopter's hit, going down. And it crashes. Lyle is injured, but not as bad as his crew chief, who cannot walk. Lyle knows that the enemy saw the chopper go down, and they'll be coming. And he only has his pistol. He puts his crew chief over his shoulder and carries him through the jungle. The enemy is getting closer. They reach a spot where there's an opening in the canopy. Lyle, Lyle's flight mate can hover his helicopter and drop down a sling on a winch. The crew chief is lifted up, and then the sling comes back down for Lyle. Into the sling as the helicopter lifts up, and Lyle dangles in the air over the trees. As the winch pulls him up, and into the bird, Lyle described the feelings of euphoria, rescued, saved. I believe that Lyle once more experienced those feelings when he went to meet 
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Euphoria, rescued, saved. Amen to that. Could have crossed. Anybody have any this morning? Yeah. Well, let's uh, make sure to pray for Joe and Marion. Uh, I know they're um, out this week for uh, family things, but uh, Marion had been uh, having headaches and things that they thought might have been due to a tick-borne illness. And last I heard, the test results hadn't come back yet, um, but they were treating it with antibiotics anyways. Um, she was well enough to, to go to the, the family uh, get-together. So um, that was good, but I think they still probably need our prayers, you know, as they're uh, still out and about, uh, but they'll be back next week. I see that uh, Marlon and Mary aren't here, and uh, we keep them in our prayers, too, uh, what they're doing, and they pray for the doctors and that radiation he's going to go through, and he's going through. Um, uh, there's a praise that uh, we we praise God that um, Lyle had friends like David and Joel, and that uh, Chris uh, prayed uh, with him before he passed away into heaven, and that um, we are grateful that uh, he was the uh, he was a founding member, charter member of this church, and um, so um, yeah, he will be missed. So uh, pray for Annie. There's a card here for her um, and the family. I want to especially pray for Larry today, uh, his choice uh, to uh, forego uh, the uh, lengthy chemo. And um, we pray for God's uh, mercy and grace and that uh, pray for his uh, exceeding love for Larry. And um, we pray for the, uh, the uh, named, uh, we haven't known the, the pastor, the part-time pastor, pray for his uh, 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 willingness to come, and we're grateful for that, and we, we pray that uh, God will set him on the right path. Pray for the uh, session that uh, wrestles with different things. I don't mean that in a derogatory way. There's a lot of things that they're going through, and also pray for the, the uh, pastor search committee who is looking for a permanent pastor. And uh, so, yeah, we want to pray, pray for God's mercy and the scourge against cancer, that, uh, that he has the solution. We pray for that solution. Good morning, everybody. Um, I've been thinking a lot about people that are ill and that have different medical needs. And I have a friend, Renee, that she, too, is giving up the treatments for her cancer. She has four children. She's a single mom. Um, she needs our prayer. And Bob has a cousin, which we're going to go visit with today. Her and her husband are going to be leaving Friday for Alaska. They have some friends there, and their friends have asked them to come visit. So they're going to be going to Alaska for two weeks. And her name is Lori, and her husband's name is Fred. She, too, has had cancer. I used to work for her at a daycare. She had her own daycare. Although I had our own two daughters, I learned a lot more about children at her daycare things that I went through with other children that I never had to go through with mine. It's an eye-opening experience, and it got us ready, my daughters ready for their um, careers right now. So with Becky being a teacher, she got to see some things that um, got her ready to help her where she's at right now. And speaking of which, Becky is still pregnant and still feeling this baby because he wants to lay this way instead of this way, and she's very uncomfortable, but she's happy that she can feel the baby, and Josh is excited, and he says, my 
brother, he says, um, I could feel him kick mommy. So that's a cool thing. And uh, we're trying to get him ready so he isn't jealous. Um, I want to pray for Bob and Sue today. She woke up not feeling well this morning, but she said this too shall pass, and they're getting ready to go on their trip to Arkansas, middle of August. But just pray for all those that are ill, sick, um, that have hard things that they're going through <coughs> right now. And one more thing I want to add is all the older kids that are getting ready to go back to college or school, they tend to go back a little earlier than the normal public school people do, but praying for the teachers and, oh, um, a teacher that was at school when I first went there at my school at Hendy, she retired probably about five years ago. And she passed away, and her celebration of life is going to be this coming weekend. And her daughter went to school with my, our oldest daughter. And um, so we, we asked that the family would be comforted, but she said she doesn't want a funeral. She wanted a celebration. So hopefully we can make it a celebration. And that's it. <laughs> Two unspoken prayers and a praise, uh, even with a little bit of wildfire influence, wasn't yesterday a gorgeous day, and don't we live in a beautiful expression of what God can do here on earth? Harriet and I took some time to drive through the Finger Lakes and uh, punctuated by occasional stops at certain uh, places that seem to have very nice wine available. What a surprise. But uh, we are blessed in this area. Thank you, Lord. Dave, can I do the honors? We should pray for our leaders because the Bible tells us to pray for those uh, in service to us. Um, and and Pat is doing well at the uh, at the nursing home. Uh, not, it's not a nursing home; it's a rehab. <laughs> and she told those people outright that she is not going to leave there until she can walk out. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us to pray for our leaders, and we do. And let's pray for our nation. Pray for all those in service to us, whether it's the military, uh, firemen, police, hospital workers, EMTs, teachers, all those who are in service to us, let's pray for them and thank the Lord. Andrew Alex this morning. Okay, let's take these requests to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you again for, for being the Father that's always there. Father, someone that we can come to and the first thought that comes to mind this morning is so many of us will miss Lyle, but yet you have him now. He's happier than he's ever been. He's looking down on us today smiling. But Father, for those that are left, for Annie and for those of us here that miss him, Father, give us that extra, extra strength that we need to, to realize that he's better off than we are. And Father, help us to Praise him and praise you for that. Father, we lift up all these different health conditions, Father. We have a myriad of health conditions. And it just seems like that we're, we're under attack. And Father, I just ask that you, you reach out and heal those that you choose to heal, Father. You give peace to those you choose to give peace. And you give strength and energy to the rest. And help us to deal with whatever it is that we're going through. Father, sometimes our decisions that we make are hard, but we know where we're going to end up. And Father, our hope is in you. Our hope is in the eternal life that you say that we have through accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. 
And Father, when we've got that right, then we know that we're okay. And no matter what happens in this life, this life is just a, a blip on the, on the screen in, the, in the terms of eternity. And Father, we have a, an eternal life to live with you. Father, I just ask that you remind us of that daily, that none of us know when our number is. And nobody, nobody knows when it's time, but you do. And Father, we just need to be prepared. We need to have that hope eternal. We need to have our focus on you, our, our love for you, our guidance by you. And Father, I lift up those people that are traveling. People, uh, You know, it's summertime. Everybody's taking vacations, but because everybody's taking vacations, the chances for issues to happen and things to happen, and Father, I just ask you to protect all those that are traveling today and, and in the near future. The teachers and the students... Uh, schools are so much different than they used to be. Uh, schools used to be a safe haven. That's not so true anymore. We took you out of the schools, Father. What else would we expect? But Father, I ask you to Give those students that, that feeling of safety. Give those teachers that feeling of safety. And Father, to guide them or to guard them and protect them from all of these, all of these terrible things that are happening around the country, around the world. Father, I ask you to, to change our nation, Father. We do need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for all those that service no matter what they do. And Father, it's so important that we realize that we're not here alone. We couldn't make it alone. And only through you and through those that you supply, Father, are we able to exist in this earth. And Father, I just ask you to remind us daily that we are sinners for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And the only reason we can stand before you is because you chose to send your son, Jesus Christ, for us to give us that chance to accept him and have eternal life. Father, it's always you that we need. And Father, I just ask you again, as I close in prayer this morning, that all of those unspoken prayers, and all of those situations that I missed this morning, Father, you've heard them all, you know them all. And I know, Father, you'll act on them all because you say you will. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And then let us pray as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We don't uh, pass the plate anymore. Uh, we haven't felt the need, and, and uh, we have a a group here that loves the Lord and feels no problem with sharing and offering back to him what he's given to us. We are doing very well financially. But just so that you know, there's a plate in the back that where you can leave a check or money or whatever it is you see fit to leave. There's a P.O. box, and it's P.O. box 261, Big Flats, 14814. You can send it to if you choose to do that. And, um, but we are still doing very well financially for those of you who don't know. And uh, we continue to support uh, our church. And the Lord allows us to continue to support many ministries. And our small church, uh, it's pretty overwhelming what we're able to get accomplished in this church. Let me pray for the, for the offering. And as I pray, maybe the uh, worship team can come forth. Thank you, Lord, for supplying all our needs. These gifts we give today is our token of thanks to you.
Please take these gifts as an act of worship and use them as there is need. Cause these gifts to be a blessing for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing your doxology. Heavenly Father, open our hearts and our minds to your spirit. Guide this speaker in everything I say. In any words that are not of you, let them be quickly forgotten. Our scripture reading this morning is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14 through 22. Before I start to read it, I'll just give you a little context. 
Solomon has just rebuilt the temple. The uh, ark is in the Holy of Holies. Solomon prayed over the temple. They had spent a week celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. Then the Lord appeared by night, and this is part of what the Lord shared with Solomon. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive them their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. As per you, if you walk before me faithfully as David your father did, and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne. As I covenanted with David your father when I said, you shall never fail to have a successor to rule over Israel. But if you turn away and forsake the decrees and commands I have given you and go off to serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot Israel from my land, which I have given them, and I will reject the temple I have consecrated for my name. I will make a byword and an object of ridicule among all peoples. This temple will become a heap of rubble. All who pass by will be appalled and say, why has the Lord done such a thing to his land and to his temple? People will answer because they have forsaken the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out of Egypt and have embraced other gods, worshiping and serving them. That is why he brought all this disaster on them. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the message this morning is, uh, couldn't think of a better message, but what can I do? What can I do? Everybody watches the news. Everybody knows the moral decay that's going on in the country right now. Uh, differences in culture, different, uh, abortion, ungodly marriages, ungodly relationships, drugs, mass shootings, murders. We hear about it on TV all the time. We see it in the news no matter what, no matter where we go. And I hope that most of us ask ourselves, well, what can we do? And we seem kind of helpless because uh, it just seems as though that it's way bigger than we are. What can I do? Or better yet, what does the Lord want me to do? Well, I think the Lord gives us a direct answer in Scripture. I think you're looking at it. Our focus this morning is what does our Lord say about it? We're going to focus on one verse today, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. I see several things in this verse. First of all, if my people who are called by my name. I realize that when, he, when this was written, it was written to the Jews and his people back then. But I have to ask, if my people who are called by my name, does that include us? Are we his people? Are we called by his name? I believe that God, whatever he speaks, it's forever. God makes no mistakes. God doesn't promise anything that he doesn't fulfill. Whether it's Old Testament, New Testament, when God speaks, that's the way it is. And God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Humility. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Give up your will to his will. In the Lord's Prayer, we just spoke. It says, Thy will be done. 
do we really mean it? When we pray that prayer, are we looking for the Lord's will to be done? Or do we just step out this door and go back and do it our own way? We need to work on giving up our will to his. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and I believe we all pray, and it's good that we do. And First John uh, one nine says, "If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness." We sin. We need to be praying that a lot. First Thessalonians five seventeen says, "Pray without ceasing." Well, then there must be more than just my sins to pray about, although. I can pretty much pray without ceasing, just covering my sins. And James uh, 5.16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Those are just three verses. There is a plethora of verses about prayer in Scripture. David, as we read through the Psalms, David prayed with his heart. He didn't pray with his mind. He prayed with his heart. He loved the Lord, and he prayed diligently. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, seek the Lord, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. My favorites, couldn't go through a sermon without mentioning those, Romans 12, 1 and 2. How do I do that? How do I seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Well, I present my body a living sacrifice, as it says in Romans 12, 1. And then I be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind so that I might be able to prove that perfect, acceptable, uh, or that um, perfect and acceptable will of God. And last, if we will turn from our wicked ways, we're all sinners. We all know that. It says in John 8.34 that whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. But then it says in 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Well, we do sin, and Thankfully, Jesus came and paid the price so that we are able to stand before the Lord day by day. But I want to take a minute and I want to cover those a little more thorough. If we do all of these things, what happens? Then the Lord will hear us from heaven. He will forgive us our sin. And he will heal our land. So what I'm saying this morning is, what can I do? It seems to me that the Lord tells me that what I can do is I can get myself right with him. And if his church would get themselves right with him, we would see changes that we couldn't even imagine. But the fact is that we individually, Mary mentioned last week, that all the stuff goes on around the world that we can pray for, but that's about it. We can't really get involved in fixing it. But we can. In the same way she said we could do it. We need to go home and we need to sit down and we need to get in an intimate relationship with the Lord. We need to be humble. We need to pray. We need to seek his face. And we need to go uh, move away or turn from our wicked ways. Lord, but it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Ever hear that? We all laugh about it. But isn't that pretty much how we act sometimes? We, we think we're so smart. We think we're, we're good people. There's not anybody in this room that I wouldn't say is a good person. But yet we're still sinners. We're not perfect. And we need to be humble before the Lord. Romans 3.23 says, 
For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10 says there are none righteous. No, not one. So if there's anyone that feels as though they've got control of it, they're good enough and God will take them, they're wrong. We are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. And if it weren't for Jesus Christ coming and hanging on the cross, we wouldn't be standing with the future that we have now. The motivation to change. You know, we're here such a short time in this life, in the, in the realm of eternity. But yet we live as though this is it. We want everything now. We want things perfect now. We aren't taking into account we don't take into account the things that we should about this is the preparation for our future. Eternity, praising the Lord. Eternity in heaven. Eternity with the fruit of the Spirit. Eternity without worry, without fear, without sadness, without sorrow, without depression. Think about those things. The Lord has opened up a wonderful thing for us. And we, we just need to realize that we can't do it on our own. We need to be humble. We need to be humble before the Lord and even humble before each other. It's always that old story. It's my will against God's will. The world teaches us how they want us to act. We see it on TV. We see it in virtually everything we do as we walk the streets day by day. But we only find out about God's will when we seek Him, when we read the book, when we communicate, when we pray, when we spend time with Him. That's how we learn God's will. And that's how we com combat the world. We can't do that without Him. Our life will never change. Our future will never change if we don't change. If it weren't for God's grace, uh, we'd be in big trouble. Proverbs 22.4 says, Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. I have to say that when God says his wages are riches, honor, and life, it's probably, again, not what we think it is. God's riches doesn't always come in dollars and cents, does it? God's riches come in fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, kindness, self-control. Those in themselves are riches. If we have those things, money loses its value. Psalm 147, 6 said, The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked down to the ground. We need to repent. We need to ask for forgiveness. We need to ask for the Lord's help in all areas of our sinful life, not just the ones others can see. But we all know there are those sins that we don't want anybody to see. We need to understand who we are if we're going to be humble. And the way we do that is we do that when we're in conversation with the Lord in prayer. The Lord will open our hearts and minds to who we are. He'll remind us what we need to know. And we need to ask for forgiveness for those things. And we need to repent. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. As I said, in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says, pray without ceasing. And some people say, well, what should I pray for? Well, <laughs> humility. Let's start with that. Heal the land. Our relationship with Jesus. Our relationship with others. Our spouse, our significant other, our family, our kids, our grandkids, our parents, our grandparents. Forgiveness. We should pray for forgiveness. But not only for ourselves. Again, the Lord's Prayer says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We need to forgive those who have sinned against us. 
We don't look for those really hard sometimes in prayer. But we need to. We need to forgive them. Self-control. Self-control is is, um, our inability to do his will. We want to do our will. And we just go out and sporadically do what we do and don't even think twice about it. One of the reasons the Lord says pray without ceasing is every time you make a decision, you should say, what do you think about that, Lord? Is that a good decision? People have spurts of anger. We need to pray about that. We shouldn't have that. But you get the picture. Jesus is interested in communication. He wants us to talk to him in everything we do all day long. He wants us to make good decisions in everything that we do. And we can't do that on our own. We think we're brilliant sometimes. And usually when we think we're the most brilliant is when we find out a short time later that maybe we weren't quite as brilliant as we thought. Because we didn't bring the Lord into that circumstance. You see, he sees things far greater than we do. He sees way beyond our eyesight. He knows the future. He knows what it's going to bring. And he can help us to make good decisions. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, Matthew 22, 37 and 38 says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. We need to be seeking the Lord with that in mind. Do we love the Lord? Do we really honestly in our heart love the Lord? And are we seeking that relationship? Are we trying to build that relationship? Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. If we're going to go anywhere, we need to be seeking him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things are added unto you. If our life isn't going really well right now, maybe we have things a little out of out of uh, order. Maybe we need to get back and seek the face of the Lord first. And then we will start to see. And he also tells us how to seek him. And again, I I, I fall back on my two favorite verses, Romans 12, 1 and 2, but he says to I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And we, we look at that, well, I can't do that. I don't have time. Or I can't do that. It, it's sacrifice. Why should I become a sacrifice? I don't want to become a sacrifice. But if you finish that verse, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, If you're seeking the face of the Lord, you understand what holy and acceptable to God is. And you realize that when you walk in his walk, life becomes simpler. Life becomes better. And it becomes easier. And that's why it's called a reasonable service. Then he goes on in Romans 12, 2 and says, Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you might prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So he tells you to present your body a sacrifice, but he tells you to get in the book, find out who God is, and start acting on that. So you know what is that good, perfect, and acceptable word of, uh, will of God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, why do we sin? Usually starts with a thought. But thoughts aren't sin until you dwell on them. (laughs) 
In 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, we demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We can't do that unless we know what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. We need to be seeking his face. We need to be reading a book. We need to be praying. Not just Sunday, not just Sunday morning. We need to be constantly praying. We need to be constantly in the book. And what that means for you is between you and the Lord. But we need to be learning. We mentioned prayer. We need his help to stop sinning. Anybody in here that thinks, well, I'm going to quit, and I'm going to do it on my own, as a fool for a client. We wander in sin because that's the nature that we were born in. But God has given us protection against that. He will help take us out of sin. He will change our ways. He will take away that desire to do whatever it is that we do uh, that we call sin in our lives. And no, just because you prayed it this morning doesn't mean it's all over now. It's something not only that you have to pray every day until it changes, it's something that you have to focus on every day until it changes. And ask the Lord constantly, because the Lord wants to change you. He already knows it's wrong. If you were just to do that every time you prayed, well, then it really wouldn't work very well. Because we wouldn't care much. We'd just go back and do it again, because we know that we just got to pray, and it's all over. But the fact is, he wants us to change. It said when I accepted the Lord, that I became a new creation a new creature in Christ. If I did, then why is it so hard sometimes to do what the Lord asks us to do? It's the sin in our lives that we don't want to give up. It's the pride. It's all those things that we, we hold dear to ourselves. It may be a job, it could be a house, a car, it could be how much money we make, it might be where we live, it could be a million things that we hang on to in life because that's what the world has told us makes us successful. That's not what God calls success. God calls success when we rest at peace in his arms. No matter what the circumstance. Like Paul, I have learned to be content in whatever state I'm in because I'm walking with the Lord. The Bible tells us we will know by our fruits. What are our fruits? Galatians 5.22 says, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, Self-control. Against such, there is no law. Is that what fills our, lot, our lives from day to day? If not, maybe we need to start a conversation with the one that can make it right. So if we, the church, do this, what happens? And when I say we, I'm talking about me and us, and the church does this. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. If you don't like what's going on in this country, what God is saying is, change it. How do we change it? We look in the mirror and change. The one person that can be changed in our life. And we only can do that with the Lord's help. And we can only do that when we seek the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 again says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Then you will start to see fruit of the Spirit when you live under that. God wants to heal our land, just like he did in the Old Testament. But he wants us to worship and obey him. We come here on Sunday morning. This isn't a social hour. We come here to worship the Lord. We sing and worship to him. We give us service and worship to him. We pray and worship to him. But the church has fallen short. When we walk outside these doors, do we maintain that same excitement, that same humbleness, that same prayer life, that same seeking his face? Do we still want to turn from our wicked ways when we walk outside those doors? God wants it from us every day, all day long, seven days a week. I know I'm not perfect, and I know we're not perfect. But the fact is, the more that we talk to the Lord about that, the more that'll change. We will become more and more what God would have us come in this life to prepare us for that life. We have no fear to where we're going. Actually, death is the beginning of life for us. The good life. Not the life we see here, the life we see around us, but the good life. So what can I do? I can be humble. I can pray. I can seek his face. And I can turn from my wicked ways. And if the Lord was asking me how I was doing in those areas, what would my answer be? Heavenly Father, we can see the moral decay in our country. We can. We want to restore it to the great Christian nation it once was. We know that only our mighty God can accomplish this task. Help us to live by the words of 2 Chronicles 7.14 so that we become not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Help the world to see what you can do with a faithful servant. Help us to honor you so that you can heal our land. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have communion now. And Chris is going to lead us. We're going to do the communion, I think, before you do the music. Okay. So we're going to stand and do the Apostles' Creed. We'll sing a song, and then we'll um, get into the communion. So let's stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Worship team.
seated. As Presbyterians, we don't believe that the bread and the juice physically become the body and, and blood of Christ. But we do believe that Jesus is present here as we come to the Lord's table. And I was reminded yesterday um, that Calvin wrote that when we come to the table and we eat the bread and we drink the wine, that Jesus strengthens us. He renews us. And in particular, he strengthens us for the storms of life. I think that's important to remember, right? It, it's not just a ritual. It's not just us following, you know, the rules, because Jesus did tell us to do it. But it is a solemn act where Jesus is present and he does something. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ and drink judgment on themselves. This is why many of you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be blind or finally condemned with the world. It is important that we come to this table in a worthy manner. So let's pray and ask the Lord to make us worthy because we could never do it on our own. Heavenly Father, we do... Thank you that Jesus came and paid the price for us. We thank you that his death on the cross took our sin and then gave us his righteousness. We know that in and of ourselves we are not worthy to come to this table, Lord. But we do ask, Lord, that you would examine our hearts Convict us of our sin and lead us to repentance. We ask, Lord, that you would cleanse us and let us come so that you can strengthen us for the storms of life. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. All of the bread is gluten-free, so there's no need to... Um, you know, look for a gluten-free kind, uh, right, Noel? So I'd ask that you come up, take your cup that has the, the bread and juice, go back uh, to your seat, and then we will partake together. So please come forward.
This is the body of Christ broken for you. Eat, remember, and be renewed. The blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of your sins and my sins. Drink and remember and be renewed. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for all of your promises that you've given us in your word. We thank you for the promise of eternal life. We thank you for the promise of forgiveness. We thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit to teach us, to guide us, to strengthen and empower us. We thank you for the gift of this table and the work you have just done in our hearts. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen us as we finish this service, as we leave this place, help us to go and do and be the people you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Worship team, let's stand and sing a final song.
Our benediction, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. Thank you for joining us today, both here and online. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you.